Hi, my name is Seamus Corlett, and I will be presenting on uh, ISO penicillin N synthase, or IPNS. Uh, first of all, what is IPNS? Uh, in the context of biosynthesis, many antibiotics like penicillin and cephalosporin contain a beta-lactam ring, as indicated by the red color. And the precursor for these is isopenicillin, or IPN. And IPNS is the enzyme that catalyzes the beta-lactam formation from uh, ACV, uh, which is a tripeptide molecule. Uh, I'm not going to read this, but it has the valine, uh, cysteine, and a precursor of lysine stuck together. Penicillin, obviously, is very famous. Uh, it's used to treat a number of bacterial infections. Uh, it's administered by injection into a vein or muscle. Uh, it inhibits bacterial cell wall synthesis by binding to bacterial proteins that make the cell wall. Uh, cephalosporin is also used for treating bacterial infections, and it works in very similar ways by inhibiting uh, bacterial cell wall synthesis. Uh, IPNS has a single iron atom in its active site. Uh, in the resting state, iron is 6 coordinate with 2 histidine, 1 aspartate, 2 water molecules, and uh, glutamine. These three ligands are called the 2-his-1 carboxylate facial triad, which is found in many non-heme iron 2 enzymes. It anchors the iron in the active site and, ma and maintains three vacant sites where other ligands or uh, substrates can bind. When ACV binds, it will replace glutamine and bind the iron through the cysteine sulfur. Uh, since thiolate is a weak field ligand, uh, the iron becomes high spin and reducing the redox potential to uh, facilitate dioxygen bonding. At the valine part of ACV, the valine part of the ACV will uh, displace one of the water molecules and when dioxygen binds the iron is oxidized to iron 3 plus uh, forming a radical. Uh, let's go through the mechanism. Uh, the radical removes the hydrogen from the beta carbon here and electrons get pushed around to form a uh, thioaldehyde. Then deprotonation at the NH releases a water molecule and forms a beta-lactam ring and uh, iron 4 plus oxo. And this iron oxo species is known to oxidize many different substrates. Uh, the remaining oxygen takes a pro proton from the tertiary carbon uh, forming a radical. And finally the radical uh, closes onto the cysteine sulfur forming a five-membered uh, thiazolidine ring. The isopenicillin uh, product is then released to close the catalytic cycle. Overall, it's a very interesting reaction of oxidative bicyclization, and beta-lactams can be hard to synthesize in a flask, so we still rely largely on this enzyme for antibiotic production. People have described IPNS as a promiscuous enzyme, that can accept many analogs of the ACV tripeptide. And in many cases, it's the reaction with such ACV analogs that have been useful in determining the mechanism of this catalysis. Uh, I just wanted to quickly point out that uh, we saw from the class that in the complex four of the electron transport chain, uh, we also have an iron cluster uh, at the very end that goes through three oxidation states. Uh, iron 2, 3, and plus 4, which also binds dioxygen as a substrate. Well, the big difference here is that this is a heme iron cluster, whereas uh, with IPNS, it is a non-heme iron uh, enzyme. But it's interesting to see that iron and dioxygen really have an intimate relationship, uh, and they are involved in many different processes, including respiration and uh, biosynthesis of antibiotics. Non-heme iron enzymes tend to be difficult to study. Uh, heme groups have the porphyrin ring, which is easy to study with absorption spectroscopy, but non-heme iron enzymes don't have that. But one catalytic advantage of non-heme enzymes over the heme ones is that the porphyrin ring leaves only the axial positions for O2 binding, uh, whereas the non-heme active sites has more binding positions for substrate binding. So it is known to catalyze a, a wide range of reactions like monooxygenation, dioxygenation, desaturation, and a reduction of dioxygen to water. 
And now I'd like to highlight some new findings on IPNS. And this result was published in 2017. And they introduced mutations to the IPNS to truncate the C-terminal end to make a tailless mutant. And it turns out this mutant can take two ACV substrates and make a CS bond here to connect them. They believe that during the step where the thioaldehyde forms, another molecule of ACV can come in and the sulfur nucleophile can attack the thioaldehyde carbon. And the reason this happens is uh, in the wild type, before the enzyme buys the substrate, a glutamine residue on the C terminal tail is bound to the iron. Uh, and when ACV binds, you can see uh, this is the facial triad here, and here's the ACV. Uh, the tail covers and shields the active site, preventing the reactive intermediates from reacting with uh, other molecules. But when you delete the C-terminal residues, it will expose the active site, which leads to the formation of a new thiol oxidation products. And here I just wanted to show my pymol screen for the IPNS uh, enzyme. So here's the entire enzyme, and you can zoom in to the active site, uh, which has the iron atom. And then the, uh, it's his two histidine and then the one aspartate facial triad. And then this is the ACV bound state. So when ACV is not here, uh, there is a glutamine residue at the C terminal uh, that is uh, bound to the iron. But when, C when ACV binds, uh, the C terminal tail uh, is displaced, but then it kind of covers the active site so that nothing else can react with uh, intermediates and everything can happen uh, within the protected uh, area. Uh, another recent study, which was published last year, uh, introduced a new synthetic model for the IPNS reactivity. Uh, they made this compound by reacting uh, this already complicated precursor with sodium thiophenolate and then using dry dioxygen in THF. Uh, this complex is claimed to be a model for the thiazolidin ring formation step of the IPNS catalytic cycle, uh, which involves the formation of a new carbon sulfur bond. And they claim that, uh, to their knowledge, this is the first synthetic model of the, uh, this intermediate. In the IPNS. And previously, co computational studies showed that sulfur transfer is kinetically favored over hydroxylation. But there's never been a synthetic model to verify that. But the team believes that this model can do just that. So they reacted the model complex with a tertiary carbon radical under uh, different temperature conditions uh, 23 degrees and minus 35 degrees. And they found that in the higher temperature, a CO bond formation is favored, whereas in minus 35 degrees, the CS bond formation is favored. And they used proton NMR and a Mossbauer spectroscopy to show that the reaction between the model complex and the radical substrate indeed uh, leads to uh, the product. So the spectrum is the uh, product here, and then three is the, the reactant. And then uh, the third one is the reactant with the radical. So it shows that this spectrum uh, looks very similar to this one, uh, showing that the reaction does indeed happen. And then the same thing is done uh, with the minus 35 degrees uh, condition. So both the crystal structure and their DFT calculation suggests that the iron sulfur bond here uh, is elongated, uh, which is also observed in the IPNS. So they suggest that this long iron sulfur bond lowers kinetic barrier for a sulfur transfer and favors the CS bond product in the cold temperature. Whereas the hydroxylation product is thermodynamically favored because of the relative strength of the COH bond that is formed. And here's the list of references. Thank you for listening.